Hello everyone, so it's the morning after the day of Colours 2022 and it's the first time I've attended Colours since they moved um, into the uh, race course at Newbury. Um, it, it made it a little bit more difficult for me to get to because I don't drive but I was uh, given a lift, a couple of uh, wargaming friends went up from Plymouth and uh, had a really fantastic day out so I thought I would uh, talk about the show a little bit and show you all my loot um, one of the items being uh, this uh, mat from Deep Cut Studios which was um, rather large and I haven't got a table space free at the moment to be able to open it up and show it to you so I just wanted to get this out of the way at the beginning of the video and move move on to things that I can fit in the camera so um, yeah uh, I spent an awful lot of money and um, I've now got uh, a lot more future projects planned and um, added to my lead mountain and so on so this is um, cobblestone this is one of they've got two cobblestone mats and this is one of them and you probably won't know or um, be able to predict what I've got planned for it and I'm not going to tell you at the moment because it's a long way in the offing so um, I won't, uh, won't go into that anymore but a really nice mat very pleased with that and uh, I also got another mat from a different place I'll show you at the moment as well. So um, you may remember I um, got the pony wall rules last year, and um, Bacchus have reproduced all those original um, figure, 15 mil figures from the Pony Wars um, game that was put on in the 1980s. Um, well, I think they use mainly Peter Lang figures um, but anyway they've reproduced them all in six mil and they've put a they've, they've produced a game mat as well which is designed to play um, <coughs> with pony wars um, and it's double sided so it's designed it's a six foot for four um, mat but it's designed for six mil figures um, because the, the table for the original game was was huge so in theory I would need a huge table to play it with my 15 mil figures but that's not practical really so it struck me this mat would be perfect to use a sort of scaled down game of 15 mil Pony Wars um, and the reason it I can say it's specifically dark designed for the, that set of rules is that around three of the edges there are these um, numerical markings um, and this these are the, the these are the um, points at which reinforcements and uh, special characters and so on special events can come onto the table um, so it's you know it's it's a bit difficult to uh, use this for any other type of game but um, I've won it specifically for Pony Wars and the reason it's double sided is one side has got this kind of yellowy um, des more deserty more a drier a drier region because the original game um, had a very kind of Hollywood um, atmosphere and it was it was all dry you know terrain buttes and and all that kind of thing um, rather than prairie rather than the plains which is basically where I'm going to set it so that is the that is probably the side I'm going to make more use of um, but it's nice to have it's nice to have both and be able to you know maybe this would do for if I expand into um, campaigns against the Apaches or something like that or a, uh, you know, somewhere set down further down in uh, New Mexico or somewhere like that. Anyway, so that is that, and now we can get on to things that I can fit more easily into the camera and talk about the show a little bit more. Okay, now um, I was looking at the before I went to the show 
a couple of weeks before it, I was looking at the list of traders and so on and uh, online and, and looking at what that, you know I might be tempted to buy and so on. And one of the things that I spotted uh, early on was that um, Empress uh, trade uh, retail a, a range of figures um, from a company called 1898 Miniatures. And I'd heard of them before. But um, when I was uh, collecting figures for my Beaujas project a couple of years ago, um, these figures weren't around and they have now brought out a really nice range of Beaujas foreign legionnaires and um, a lot of Berbers. Um, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. But um, I was struggling really to find figures two years ago. Um, the Redoubt range, March or Die range, is is okay. Uh, I like Redoubt figures, um, but they're getting a little bit old now, and um, they're a little bit larger than 28 mil. They're on the large end of the 28 mil definition. Um, and the next best uh, figures were Castaway Arts in Australia, which is the ones that I bought a lot of. I have got a lot of other foreign, it's all in my, you know, most of this is still in my, unpainted in my lead mountain. Um, yeah, I have got some other figures from a few places, but um, that's what my my figures so far are mainly composed of, Redoubt and, and Castaway Arts. But now I just had to get, I had to, had to get these because they are such nice figures um, so I'm not going to show you them all um, you know there's very little point in showing you uh, you know every single unpainted figure so I'll just get some out to give you an idea so this is a command pack of the legionnaires um, separate nap sacks and things like that with these figures, um, that's fine. Let's just try and zoom in a little bit. So that's quite a clever idea. One guy carrying his knapsack. An NCO figure, lovely face, long long beard on him, a real grizzled veteran, the officer figure. So um, yeah I'm gonna have to get straight back into painting some more figures for the Beaujas era. Um, so, the, so these uh, I I didn't know but I wanted them so badly that um, I pre-ordered them. I didn't know whether I'd be able to get them on the day. I, I'll talk about a little bit more about that later in terms of um, how traders are ch changing now to uh, requiring pre-orders at shows. Um, yeah, but I bought these on pre-order and they were, they were the Beaujast deal, which means that you get a special figure Hope I can find it in a hurry now. Old Beaujast, which is great. There he is. So that's meant to be Beaujast himself. I mean, you know, it's, it, apart from the fact he's in a more kind of heroic pose, there's nothing really to distinguish him from another member of the Foreign Legion. But uh, yeah, I can make a special character out of him and. Even at some time, because I've got that Fort Zindernerf model, I might even be able to invent a kind of uh, Beaujast type of game where the, where the, the, what was it, the Blue Water Diamond is being uh, eagerly sort of sought after by Sergeant Lejean and all his cronies, while the, the, the Jast brothers try and protect it and protect one another. And then um, part of the range as well, which there only, is only just uh, been released on the market, is an Arab Berber deal. Now, these 
these are going to form um, I am going to combine them with my Tuareg but these are really going to form the basis of a, a kind of a new army um, so probably playing the men who would be kings with these as well um, but it, it it goes back to this video I made some time ago now about about the whole genre, the Beaujas genre, and the foreign, you know, the, and the um, the riff wars and the 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 historical account, you know, the historical events that took place, um, as opposed to the the sort of myth and legends of Beaujas. Beaujas is set. Um, in in a sort of uh, hypothetical setting, an imaginary fort called Fort Zindernef, which was right down in the south of um, French-held Sahara. So not close to, but closer to British uh, colonies in, in places like Nigeria than it, than it is to uh, the north of Africa, Algeria, um, Tunisia, Morocco, that kind of area. Um, and the Berbers, although the Tuareg were a Berber um, race, they had a very distinctive appearance, distinctive uh, furniture on their camels, all that kind of thing, um, distinctive dress, distinctive colours on their, on their dress, as opposed to the Arabs and Berbers of the north, um, who were the principal um, protagonists for the Foreign Legion in the Rif Wars. And these are very definitely historically accurate um, depictions of Berbers. Uh, so, in a way, you know, it's a mistake to, ki to kind of uh, describe them as being uh, the opponents of Beaujest. They, 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 they weren't, but they're going to do fine um, to supplement my Tuaregs and so on. So uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. And um, there are three types of kind of headdresses, turbans, um, I forget the name, but there's the traditional kind of Berber headdress, and there are um, traditional hairstyles. So this is a command pack, um, separate heads on some of them. But yeah, I want to find. Um, I want to find the ones that are, haven't got some, anything covering their heads, and they've got sort of. Uh, they look at all, they almost look like Cossacks with the um, the sort of. Uh, oh, here are some. Uh, can you see that? So he's got like a, a sort of top knot on his head. Really, really like that. So I'm going to be have great fun painting these up. And as I say, it's going to sort of um, sidetrack me from things that, you know, I, I was concentrating on up until getting these. So with this pack, you get a personality figure as well. And this is Al Raisuli. Is it Al Suli or Raisuni? Might be Raisuni. Um, and so he was a genuine historical character, um, maybe not quite as glamorous and dynamic a figure as this model portrays. Um, if you have seen the film The Wind and the Lion, um, you will recognise this character. Um, the Wind and the Lion is a highly fictionalised account of... Al Waisuni's um, kidnap of a European, a Greek. Um, in in history, he kidnapped a, a male. Um, in in the film, he kidnaps Candice Bergman, who's playing an American with a Greek-sounding name, um, and her two children, and uh, takes her off into the desert and holds her hostage in order for the um, 
the colonial powers and the Sultan of Morocco to um, meet his demands for territory and recognition and so on. Um, you know, the, the Sean Connery figure is a really kind of heroic, um, fictionalised account of al Waisuni. Uh but he was a, he was a historical character, and he actually ended up um, being killed by Abdul El Krim, um, who is another character in another film played by Ian Holm in March or Die. So there is again there is a sort of there's a there's a you know sort of interconnection between all these films, all the kind of historical realities and so on and. The, so the so a lot of these fixtures would do very well for the Rift Wars, um, fighting the historical depictions of the Foreign Legion that I've got and so on. So there's a lot there's a lot to mix and match there now. Um, but again, the the Rift Wars weren't really so much about um, you know sort of massive battles. They were they were more about guerrilla warfare and um, picking off individual outposts and so on but not with direct attacks on forts like you see in the movies there are more kind of uh, um, covert kind of operations where they would um, pick off at night creep up to the walls at night and lasso the legionnaires and try and get their weapons and so on that kind of thing wouldn't make a terribly good war game so we'll, we'll go with a good old knock about on the table with lots of uh, Arab horsemen milling about and legionnaires in squares or so on, that's what I've got intention for those. Right, on to the next thing. It was Al Raisuli, that uh, historical character, I just looked it up, Not, I, I keep thinking Raisuli for some reason, but Al Raisuli. Anyway, on to the next thing I purchased, so um, didn't intend to get this uh, before I set off, but having seen it and having picked up the uh, Boges figures uh, I thought I might as well get some more desert terrain because the game I played they put a back rep up of the men who will be kings um, the Tuareg uh, suffered a lot from the fire of the French Foreign Legion and uh, they could have done with a lot more cover so I thought I would get all this I had seen these before this company uh, Warpaint figures he was at Legionary and I did buy some terrain from him. I bought a hill from him at, at uh, Exeter, but uh, thought I'd pick all this up. So um, I, I, got a, I got a deal, a sort of show deal, um, and a, you know, by buying a pack. So I got uh, t a large and a medium piece of terrain. I'm not going to show, I'll show you what they're like in a moment with some of the smaller pieces. I got the uh, Desert Starter five piece set. And I got the I got two boxes of desert scatter set. So I'll show you what the scatter looks like, and you can get an idea what the, the terrain looks like as a whole. Um, not something that I could do to uh, this level of uh, attractiveness, um, but at the same time. Um, you are paying a lot of money for something that isn't terribly substantial um, but the guy's got to make a living and I'm perfectly happy to throw money at these companies so that is the idea of what the scatter terrain looks like and, and the other nice thing is now um, previously a lot of his terrain didn't kind of the colours varied from one set to another now they were, they were uniform color like this so um, this is going to you know fit complete my collection of, uh, of desert terrain now and I'm very happy with that um, yeah while I've got it on the table there now let's talk a little bit more about the show so um, as I say I got a lift up there um, it was a really uh, easy journey for me as particularly as I wasn't driving um, but there are two ways of really getting from the West Country to that area and one of them you can say is the quick and efficient route and that's along motorways mainly and the other is the attractive route along the A303 um, and the 
M5 for some reason was closed between two junctions um, so we were, we were debating which way to go anyway and we had no choice we went the attractive route and it was spectacularly attractive um, at halfway along there was some kind of hot air ballooning event and the sky was just filled from horizon to horizon with um, hot air balloons and uh, I got my camera out and wound the window of the car down and failed miserably <laughs> to get photography of any of them apart from one that was directly in front of the car um, so I'll show you a little bit of a, a clip of that um, and of course we went past um, Stonehenge as well uh, but um, when we got to the show um, free entry and uh, absolutely smooth you know just went walk because of the free entry the the queue the doors open the queues just walked in and we were quite a long way in the back of the queue but um got in with a, within about five minutes of the the doors opening so really good from that point of view um the there was uh, another group of uh war gamers from plymouth who who made the same journey on the same day and they had chosen to go the motorway route uh, and got stuck in traffic like that and um, got there only got there about 11 o'clock so their day day was start, slightly marred by travel travel issues and um, we noticed on the way back as well that not only were they still doing emergency repairs to the road surface at the point where the previous holdup had, had been because we went back along the M5 um, that there was another accident and massive um, tailback behind that accident and then another massive tailback at the area where they were doing the emergency repairs because they had to divert the traffic off of the motorway and through I can't remember the name of the town they had to divert them through now but there was lo lots, a lot of tailbacks in the direction towards um, Newbury you know so if that had happened in the morning it would have people would quite possibly not have even got to the show um, but we were very lucky and it was a really grand day out um, another thing I really liked about the, the venue was that it had um, lots of catering facilities plus ample places where you could sit down and um, you know enjoy your food unlike salute which is you know you often have to sit on the on the hard ground somewhere you know on, on, in, inside the building at, at XL. Um, I I had a very enjoyable pasty sat on the terraces of the of the grandstand looking out over the race course and there were you know you could sit on the picnic table type arrangements in the enclosure really really good from that point of view Let's show you something else I bought. Um, more mundane items, lots of bases. So these are from MDF ones are from war bases. Um, two lots of Renedra bases from uh forget the name sorry apologies to them so these are going to be additional bases now um because i'm getting back into uh 15 mil planes wars and i based all my figures for peter pig's western walls and didn't get on with those at all so but i've got to carry on with the same basing system so that's what they're for these are more um plastic bases that i use for my cavalry very often and um, you know I'm going to need a lot more for the the Beaugest range for the for the Berbers um, lucky to get hold of these two so they, they had four packs of um, 15 25 by 50 mil bases two of them were three pound fifty each uh, two of them were four pounds each so I got the two for three pound fifty each and asked why there was discrepancy and they said because the prices were going up at the show um, so it must be you know cost of materials and so on going up because of the crisis 
before I got hold of them. Um, just pause the camera for a minute and put something else on the table to show you. So I needed some uh, new scalpel blades and uh, couldn't find exactly what I was wanting. We're looking for, uh, but these are general purpose curved blades and uh, it does say for use with particular craft knives and I've got a, an expo kind of scalpel blade holder so they look to me as though they would fit in my scalpel blade holder but this was only £1.95 so I got this as well and it has got a, a straight edge scalpel blade in, in it as well for good measure um, they were from a company called Barwell UK airbrush supplies and uh, they have an online store as well so you can check them out if you want um, but quite glad to get hold of that um, and I did have those on my list of things to to get hold of um, as as did I with the Renedra bases I wanted to get hold of those and was glad to see those so um, yeah this gets me on to this whole business about pre-ordering um, I can see the reason why it, it has to be done nowadays. Um, most companies have got um, far too extensive a range to be able to take everything um, to the to the shows, and that's bound to cause disappointment um, to people who think they can just turn up and buy whatever that trader has, you know, in their catalogue. Um, so I can see why it's done, but at the same time. It does take away, to me, a little bit of the kind of fun of going to a show. I like to go to the show not really knowing what I'm going to come back with often, you know, to sort of uh, see things that can uh, sort of uh, tease my palate a little bit and get into new projects and what have you, um, or just have two things in mind and I'm not quite sure which I want to buy. I've got money enough to buy one of them but not both. Um, and I look at them when I'm at the show and, and uh, you know, make my decision then. But, it, you know, it's impossible for for traders to provide that nowadays. So they have to, you know, limit what they can take. Um, so, you know, fair enough. But, um, you know, I, I wanted a good, a good example was um, Gringo Forties do a few uh figures that you know just so uh, just tiny you know tiny little you know purchases that i wanted to make they do a, an al Zuli figure funnily enough and i thought i would take a look at that and maybe buy it but um on the day green gay 40 is all they had at the show they just took their entire vietnam war range because they'd had a lot of inquiries about it recently and the vietnam war is coming back into popularity as a wargaming uh, genre and um, that's all they had and I, I just you know there were they had nothing for me to buy on the day but I had a very enjoyable chat with them um, but yeah I wanted to buy from them a couple of figures from their kind of conquistador range uh, the figure of Al Waizuli and a, and they do a western marshal drawing his guns which look quite nice but um, next time they're at a show that I'm attending, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a ring, you know, prior to attending and, and pre-order all those. So they were quite content about that. Uh, yeah, on to the next thing. Yeah, the company I got the Renetra basis from was uh, Trevor Hol Holland Koritani Magnetic Displays. Um, they're fr frequently at shows. I've bought things from them before. Got a good range of uh, scenic items and so on. Uh, right, uh, got in lots of books around now. Um, I saw this and um, I am due to do a, a general wargaming update soon. That, you know, that that's going to be probably out next week. But I didn't want to combine... Um, everything together because you know the way I whistle on it's going to be a massively long video but um, I'm painting up a figure of William Marshall at the moment he probably won't be featured in the update because he's a little bit behind schedule but um, he'll probably be in the video after the next video um, but I saw this book in the bookshop and got hold of this it's the, the story of, of William Marshall 
Um, won't say anything more about that or why I'm painting up this particular figure until uh, a future video. And then um, right at the end of the day when I thought I was entirely spent out and I was just, you know, wandering around waiting for to meet up to drive back to Plymouth. Um, I just stopped to look at uh, particular, I think it was the uh, Sarissa stand and noticed this set of rules, the Baron's War. Now again, um, you might have a few clues already from some of the things that I've shown you, some of the purchases I've made and my future plans, but I, I, was, I am looking for rules for this period and I've heard of the Baron's Wars. They, they're, um, they came with a Kickstarter uh, set of figures. Uh, I think they're 3D printed resin figures, not sure. They're, by all accounts, they're very nice, but I don't need to get any more figures. Um, but I did think I would pick up, um, you know, I just spent just over my, um, my budget, uh, you know, spend, you know, using the plastic to get hold of this set of wars because I think I would pick them up. If you if you buy the Kickstarter set, you get these free, but um, if you buy them separate, they're 17 pounds. But they're a little bit more, um, uh, you know, detailed, complex and um, sophisticated, which is what I'm looking for than wolves like Lion Rampant. I've got nothing against Lion Rampant, but um, you know, it's, that Lion Rampant's a nice pick up and play, quick set of wolves, but I'm, I'm, I'm after something a little bit more um, in depth and these seem to match my requirements perfectly and there's a supplement to them death and taxes and um, in particular in here um, there are army lists for uh, future projects that I've got in mind um, that I haven't got the figures for yet but I'm thinking I will get around to uh, to buying some of them and um, yeah that's what I went to, again because it's a long way off in the future but that's I've got plans that's all I'll say so that's all the um, that's all my purchases I think I remember rightly a few things that what you know weren't there uh, pick the traders that weren't there or traders who hadn't taken um, things that uh, I would have been interested in buying um, but as I say I don't like to pre-order a great deal and I'd already made you know there's no point in pre-ordering and then just wandering around the show and picking up um, you know the items and and then not having any more money to spend so that was why I did it and I had a really fantastic it was a great great show um, the, this is uh, the floor plan and so on and um, I'm going to show you now bits of footage of the games that uh, I filmed. I didn't film all the games. Um, in general I'd say the, the quality of the games was very good but um, in comparison to Legionary I, I think Legionary would have pipped it in, in overall in terms of the you know the sort of overall quality of the games um some of the some of the games you know at uh at newbury were they were okay but they're just you know flat surfaces with figures on them in some some places and i like to get really nice close in kind of pictures of figures and buildings and terrain as, as you know um and in particular there was an area there that you, you can see This area in, you know, outlined in hatch, four tables, D13, um, completely, you know, un unattended. They're just empty tables, which seemed like a massive waste of space. And um, not sure whether the uh, people that were supposed to be D13 didn't uh, attend for, you know, their own reasons or were unable to attend because they had difficulty. Maybe they were stuck on that in that M5 
uh, motorway, but I did notice that um, the group that were supposed to be running a game there called Black Hole War Games, and they were meant to be playing a game of Necromunda by the look of it. So whether Black Hole War Games is a kind of joke, and they because um, it was just a black hole of uh, nothingness in the middle of the hall there. I don't know. Um, the bring and buy didn't see anything on the bring and buy that uh, tempted me, but then again, I found it very difficult to actually get anywhere near the bring and buy to to look at anything until very late on in the day. It was a little bit of a crush. Um, I thought they could have probably put more stuff on that and uh, use these tables even to you know to have it have it have a kind of uh, L shaped area. Um, but the popularity of bringing buyers, even even doing that, would have would have um, you know probably been a bit of a crush. But um, yeah, nothing nothing uh, nothing of note to buy on the bringing buy. And yeah, that's I think that's everything that I want to say about about the show. Um, really great day out. Um, probably the most fun you know I've had. <laughs> All, all year I think it was more fun than legionary um, even though legionary had a better quality of games you know there was more there was more to do in general it was a bigger show and um, more to spend me money on and um, you know really really enjoyable day out with me the um, buddies going down to, going down on the motorway and, and down the past uh, Stonehenge and so on Right, I'll stop wittering, show you the my footage of the games and then it will just that'll be it, it'll just come to a, a stop. So thanks very much for watching and see you on the next video. Bye for now.
Footage over. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got something. Oops. 